Hi, John Sarton here with the Rio Grande Jewelry Tech Team. Today I'm going to show you a couple quick ways to anneal metal. So first off, you need to make sure that you're following all the safety precautions that are found on the SDS sheets for the, uh, the, the type of fuel that you're using. Um, so one thing about annealing is uh, most of us are told to heat the metal to a dull cherry red. But that's a, such a subjective term. What color is dull cherry red? Um, so there's a, there's a couple other indicators other than uh, looking for that dull cherry red that you really can't see unless you're in a darkened studio uh, that you want to look for whenever you are annealing. Let me go ahead and light the torch up. So this is a piece of copper. This is going to work on copper, brass, silver, bronze, um, pretty much any metal, this technique. And I'm just going to start heating the piece up. Now I want you to watch and um, you're going to all of a sudden see orange flames kind of bouncing off of the metal. As soon as that happens, that, that is an indicator that you are right at about annealing temperature. Okay, so I'm going to slowly heat this up. Now you see the orange flames that are bouncing off the metal. That's it. The metal is actually annealed right now. So you can use that um, for any of the metals, like I said, copper, brass, uh, sterling silver, uh, and now your metal is annealed. You don't have to worry about looking for that dull cherry red color. Uh, you see that color uh, bounce off the metal, you know that it's, that it's done. Okay, so that was one way of, uh, of annealing metal and knowing when your metal is annealed. Here's another way, and uh, this way I use flux. Um, I personally like using paste flux. I use paste flux on uh, all base metals and sterling silver, um, but you can, use, you can use liquid flux as well. Flux is a really good temperature indicator, and it really helps out whenever you are kneeling. So let's go ahead and fire the torch up. Kind of start drying the flux out just a bit. Another thing is this will help fight oxides that are built when, whenever you are annealing. And like I said, it's a really good temperature indicator. So as soon as the flux goes clear and glassy, you're at annealing temperature. Um, paste flux, most flux is going to go clear and glassy right about 1100 degrees, which is, uh, which is the annealing temperature for most metals. Close to it. Uh, there's some metals at 1100 you might not get to a complete dead soft state, um, but, uh, but it's going to get you close. So uh, it, I just showed you how to anneal uh, sheet, so let's talk about annealing wire. So annealing wire in this form is not that easy. Um, so you can never really have a consistent heat throughout the piece. So instead of trying to anneal it this way, take it and wrap it up in a nice little tight coil. Now what this is going to do, it's going to concentrate the mass. So it's going to uh, heat more evenly throughout the entire wire. And it's, uh, it's going to be a nice, quick and, and easy annealing. So uh, again, we're going to go ahead and apply some flux. And I'm just going to dab it on in a couple places. Remember, this is just a temperature indicator. And I will start heating it. Since this mass is concentrated, it's going to, it's going to really transmit the heat throughout the piece evenly. And if you do it the other way around, actually, flux is clear, we're there. If you, uh, if you try to anneal a, a piece like this, and the annealing is very inconsistent throughout the length of the wire, you can get places where the wire is softer and harder. Um, so that's going to cause problems, especially trying to form the wire. 
um, where you might have some brittle spots. Uh, this way here is going to be a lot easier for you to control that heat and now you've got a nicely uh, kneeled coil. Okay, so uh, I showed you how to, uh, how to bring your metal up to temperature, a few indicators of uh, how you can tell that your metal is up to temperature. Now we need to talk about uh, the other component of annealing and that is quenching. Quenching is whenever you take the piece of metal and you, uh, and you put it into water to, to rapidly bring the temperature down of the metal. So um, uh, with, uh, for instance, sterling silver, brass, copper, and uh, most yellow golds um, and uh, palladium white golds, uh, you, can, uh, you can bring the metal up to temperature, uh, turn your torch off, then pick the piece up, quench it in water. They all pretty much react the same. Okay, so with red golds, red golds are a little bit of a different creature. Um, red golds require a quench uh, um, immediately at heat. Um, so bring the, the metal up to temperature. Um, before you even take the torch off of it, pick the piece up and then quench it. Um, red golds, if you quench too slowly or if it comes down to te uh, room temperature too slowly, they become brittle. Okay, so with argentium, um, argentium is a uh, sterling alloy. Uh, it has a, a material called germanium in it, a metal called germanium in it. This reacts differently to quenching. So with argentium, if you quench too quickly, you can actually shatter the argentium. It'll crack. Um, so you, you really want to bring that temperature down uh, slowly. I always kind of uh, fall back on the safe side of things with argentium. I will uh, I'll bring my piece up to uh, temperature, I'll pull it off, I'll uh, set it on a bench block, and then I walk away. Okay, with uh, nickel white golds, nickel white golds uh, react very similar to, to argentium. Um, nickel white golds, I like to cool a little bit quicker than, than argentium. So um, nickel white golds, I will bring up to temperature, I will pull off, set it on a bench block, and then I like a fan to blow air across it. So um, it is, uh, it's cooling quicker than it would normally in, in just uh, normal atmospheric air between the bench block and the movement of the air. So, um, yeah, nickel white golds are, are a little bit tricky to work with as far as, as annealing. Okay, so that's uh, annealing in a nutshell. Um, I hope this information has been helpful, and if you have any questions, give us a call.